yo, 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 just relax, take a deep breath, be confident. That's what coaches used to tell me way back in the day about how to hit in games. And if you're still hearing that piece of advice today, I got some actionable steps for you to take that's way deeper than surface level. That's gonna help you translate your practice into games. So I'm here to help you break through so that you can bring your A game and A swings every time. So let's get to the bottom of this so that you can get on top of your game to the lab. Let's get it. Let's go. Before we start moving our body, we gotta move our minds. I'm gonna read something to you. I want you to know. I wanna know what this means to you. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew. It beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on a rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. Oof. That is Matthew 7, 24 to 27, if you're curious. If your foundation is built on the sand, if you get into a sandy batter spot, like Inwood Hill Park, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you have your foundation on a nice flat surface, like if you're a lefty, for example, lucky guys, then your foundation is so much greater. Now, of course, it gets deeper than that. Now, when it comes to hitting, there's so much pieces of advice out there that it kind of contradicts itself. Swing up, swing down, push your hands back, pull your elbow back, all these things are gonna confuse you. But, but, be the player. Be the player that researches. Be the player that discerns good from bad pieces of advice. And also be the player that applies what they learn every single day. You're gonna have to hit every day. You're gonna have to throw every day, grounders every day. It's a tough sport, but what's suffering? What is that? Suffering is inevitable, we have to. It's in our nature, human nature. Jesus sacrificed himself and nobody suffered more than he did. And as he said, deny your flesh and pick up your cross daily. So this whole foundation thing is just basically building your development and not worrying so much about the result because the result will take care of itself. Now, if you focus on the results, however, that's when you're gonna get in trouble because your development is gonna take a back seat. You're gonna do whatever math you gotta do to know how many hits you need next game. Not only that, you could also get good results with ugly technique. So which player are you? Are you the player that builds their foundation on sand and uses the athleticism as number one and maybe technique down the line? Or are you the player that builds their foundation on a rock and then has the athleticism as the cherry on top? Comment down below, let me know which player you are. Number two, practice personal pressure. You gotta apply pressure to yourself in practice. Personally, you apply your own pressure to you so that when the games come, diamonds are made. Now it all starts with not rushing in to the fun stuff like BP and flips. Rushing in practice leads to rushing in games, which rushing would elevate your heart rate. So instead of taking one set of 10, take 10 sets of one. If I'm being honest, uh, popular practice philosophy is to get your reps in, which is, sounds good to the ear, but reality is it values quantity over quality. And it is very prominent hey, in settings. Hey, come on, enough gag, let's go. Like team practice. Five. Got a baby, get your reps in, dad, come on. Let's go, we don't got enough time. Time is now. Now I got a quick tip for you. It's called less after more, which is just a fancy way of saying early on, take more swings, but after, take less. Because honestly, in games, we typically don't take more than 10 swings, counting all the foul balls and balls in play, right? And I'm just being generous. 10 swings is a lot. But less after more is key. So let's be honest. You don't really need to learn how to swing anymore. You've been taking 100 swings a day your whole life. You need to learn how to hit. And how to hit is repeating the moves by yourself quickly. Now, for those that want to play in the next level, we got to have a seat for this one. So I emphasize the word quickly because now the pitch clock has arrived, right? If the game has sped up on anybody, it definitely has sped up on somebody now. And we're just going to have to adjust to it. It's just the way it is. Baseball has become a business and we, we need to play that business game too. So as players, we're gonna need some solutions. And some solutions is always, obviously, being ready for release, pitch release, 
always being ready, always being on time. And, and some other quick tips I got for you is to have heart time. As we have warm up time, we're gonna need some time for the heart to lower the heart rate. Because as we warm up, as we do our dynamics and as we hit and as we do things that require movement, our heart rate elevates, which makes us speed up. Now our point, our job is to slow down. So we're gonna need heart rate time. This can be meditation, this can be prayer, this can be breathing. And if you got some breathing techniques, cool, use those. But we're gonna need quick ones in the box because we can only bring a foot out. We can't even step out anymore. So with that, I got two of them. My favorite is the Zerbert breath. It loosens up all the muscles in your face, um, which in turn helps your eyes ease up and see the ball better, all right? It's just a chain of events. <laughs> it's just by loosening up your lips. And another one is the double inhale, exhale. So take two deep inhales and then exhale slowly. And that probably be enough to, to help you lower your heart rate. So the idea is to show up in the box with a lower heart rate than normal. So that, that happens way before, that happens in practice, that happens before you even step into the box. So keep that in mind because the game is speeding up and those that wanna play at the next level, you're gonna to have to be comfortable at this speed. You're also gonna to have to learn how to slow down at this speed if you wanna find success in the higher level. Now, if you wanna hit in games, you gotta understand that there's in-game traps and those in-game traps start in practice. If you do not have a hack machine, BP and flips is a trap, almost, could be, because it's flat and it's so easy to feel good. So you daddy hack. So it's easy to feel good, but not look how you feel. You worked so hard on these moves to look good, but in games they don't look like that because it feels good, because it's easier, it's flat. And the beautiful part about solo practice, one more, one more, is that you get one more. One more. <laughs> Golly, one more again. I'm pushing it. That's the one. So you're in, you're in practice, you're feeling great, you're taking daddy hacks. What happens if you take that into the games? Well, you might hook it, you might foul it, you might flat out miss it. And that could be the best pitch you get all game. Now, what you don't get is one more. Now earlier I mentioned, it is easy to feel good, but not look how you feel. I want you to listen to what JD Martinez has to say about that. I don't know. I'm more of like, no, no, that looks right. I don't care what you feel like. I don't care if it feels like crap. If you go out there and you do that and you get three hits, I guarantee you it's gonna feel good. Worry about what it looks like, and then you'll get the feel. Now there's so many traps to be wary of, and one of them is the result trap. Because if you're getting base hits from here, I'm curious to see what you could do from here. All right, so keep that in mind. Make sure you're building your foundation over building it quickly. And as JD says, make sure that your moves look good, not just feel good. And you can do that and you can train that through self-induced pressure-based practices. And lastly, have your eyes open to see the traps, but also your mind open to discern. Now, because we're talking about getting your practice to your games, I got a special offer for you. It's not even an offer, it's a no-brainer. It's free. So go click that first link because you're gonna send me your practice swings and your game swing, one of each, and we're gonna compare and contrast and see what we're missing so that we can translate our practice into games. So go click that link. I don't know how many people are gonna watch it, so I'm gonna put a cap on it just so I can have more time to create more videos for you guys. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate that. And just so you know, there's more techniques, more breakdowns, more tactics, and definitely more Jesus. So be sure to subscribe, hit that bell, because the time 